first, let's take a look at the new sequence window. The first thing you'll notice is that the columns are resizable, just by clicking and dragging on the black dividing line between them. If you'd like to see the columns in a different order, just hold your Option key and drag them where you want them. When you get the window set up just the way you want, select Set Default Location from the pop-up menu to lock it in. Your sequences are now kept tidily tucked away here. What used to be called subsequences are now segments, which we'll check out in a little bit. But first, let's head up to the control bar. Of course you knew you could change record modes here, but did you know this button gives you one-click access to the audio record monitor window? Very handy. This pop-up lets you select any sequence or segment loaded and go directly to it. The track pop-up lets you quickly select any track in the current sequence, and clicking the track button brings up the edit window for that track. This keyboard icon button is a shortcut to the MIDI instruments window, and this button pulls up the patch names window for this track and instrument. So you could, for example, choose to sort your patch names in alphabetical order to find sounds faster. Now let's check out the new tracks window. Again, you can resize and option drag the columns and set default location to lock in your settings. Hey, look at this. Click this triangle and the strip chart now appears in the overview section of the tracks window. This means, for example, if you wanted to draw a volume curve for your koala track, you could just draw it here without ever opening an edit window. Very cool. But wait, there's more. Let's undo that and let's say you wanted the same controller change for multiple tracks. You could just select the tracks, draw the controller, I'll draw a fade out here, and I've drawn the identical fade out volume curve on all my tracks with just one action. Very nice. If you need to do some extra super accurate controller editing, you can now resize the strip chart and zoom in further than you'd ever want. Ah, that's much better. Now let's take a look at some new strip chart editing tools. I always like my Vibes tracks to have heavy tremolo. Now I can choose from four waveform shapes and draw in a sine wave tremolo. Wow, now I can make my Vibes pan back and forth. It's just as easy. Next, we'll look at something truly spectacular. Play Quantize, which allows you to leave your tracks unquantized and non-destructively quantize them on playback. You can adjust all your quantized parameters exactly to taste without ever affecting your original track. When you get a quantized setting you like, you can save it and name it, and now it'll appear in the pop-up menu for every track. Hey, there it is. If you want the same quantized settings on another track, but don't want to save them permanently in the pop-up menu, just copy settings, go to your other track, and paste settings. You can also select Groove Play Quantize with full access to all grooves. Studio Vision Pro 4 can process 8-bit through 24-bit audio events in either mono or stereo. Now you can also process just part of an audio event by highlighting it and then selecting your DSP process. Studio Vision Pro 4.0 also has a complete fade and crossfade facility with the ability to crossfade between any two audio segments. We can also create fade-ins and fade-outs of any length and selectable shape. We can choose to create one entire audio event with a crossfade, or we can choose for the crossfade region to be a separate audio event, retaining the audio on either side. Here's the new DSP Preferences window. In this window, we can set up our preferences for each type of DSP process. For example, for pitch shifting, we could choose to bypass the Settings dialog, bypass the Save As dialog. We could choose to save each new event in a separate file, and even choose the folder on our hard drive where we want our pitch shifted audio stored. We can tell Studio Vision to create unique file names. For example, by putting the track name together with the date. If we select the All DSP Commands option, we can tell Studio Vision whether we want to create one event after a DSP process or separate events. Studio Vision Pro 4 allows you to choose, through the Command Setup window, how you are going to interact with the program. For example, let's say to activate recording, instead of hitting the Tab key on your keyboard, you've always wanted to hit the Plus key on your numeric keypad. Simply click in the column where it says Tab, press the Plus key, and your wish is granted. If you try to assign a key that is already assigned to a different function, Studio Vision Pro will warn you. There are so many different commands that are customizable, you can basically set up Studio Vision Pro to work any way you want. This column allows you to choose MIDI events that will trigger different functions. For example, if I wanted to start Studio Vision playing by pressing the very top key on my keyboard controller, I would click in the MIDI event column, 
I would press the top key, and now it's assigned. If I wanted to stop Studio Vision with the next key down, the B, I would click here, press the B, and it's also assigned. To make my MIDI keys work, I'll go to the Setups menu and choose MIDI Keys Enabled. And as you can see, when I press the top key on my controller, Studio Vision starts playing. When I press the next key down, it stops. If I open my MIDI keys window, I can see the two MIDI events that I have assigned. You can also disable MIDI keys from this window. A handy new editing feature of Studio Vision Pro 4.0 is nudging. I'm going to hop into my settings window and set up my nudge parameters. Right now we're set up to units, but I'm going to change my nudging to 1 16th note. And I'm going to set up the pitch up and down nudging to 1 semitone. Now, by just hitting the arrow keys on my computer keyboard, I can hop around from note to note. By holding my command key and pressing the up and down arrows, I can nudge the note higher and lower in pitch. And by holding my command and pressing the right and left arrows, I can nudge the note earlier and later in time. Very handy. Studio Vision Pro 4 also features a new extra large counter. You can change the font or choose to display absolute and relative symphony codes. The counter is actually interactive. Just click and drag on the number to go anywhere in your song. And if you keep going, you'll see Studio Vision Pro 4 goes into the thousands of measures. Wow. Now let's take a quick look at the new settings window. We can set our favorite controllers. We can set the parameters for insert note, our strip chart defaults, including the waveform frequency for those oscillating tools. We have editing and real time settings. And I find my music is sounding much better when I'm composing in a high quality teak environment. Well, you've probably been wondering, what is this groovy new drum set icon that looks like a whole new edit window? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's the pulse edit window, and it is really an amazing way to do drum parts. I've got a one measure loop set up, so I'm just gonna click this button and dive right in. If you're familiar with the tracks window, you're gonna have a very easy time learning the pulse edit window because there are many similarities. The first thing I'm gonna do is say create new drum track. Now you can see I've added a line. I can name this track. I can select any instrument in my studio, any patch from this instrument, and many other things. And you can see that this line represents one drum sound. I'm going to move some of these columns around to make it a little more convenient. I'm going to choose the TR-808 kit. I'm going to choose what drum I want from that kit. I'm going to open up this velocity toggle, start my one measure looping, grab my magic drumstick tool, and paint in a bass drum part. Now, by clicking this plus button, I'll add another line. Now, I'll select a closed hi-hat, open my velocity toggle, and paint in a closed hi-hat track. Let's add another line, set it to a different channel. I could send it to a whole new MIDI device. I'm going to set a different drum set for this channel open the velocity toggle, and paint in a Wadaiko track. Let's add another line. Set this to a different channel. Open the velocity toggle, and paint in a Wadaiko rim track. No, I think we should change that to a Hiyoshigi. Ah, much better. I'm going to close my velocity toggles to save some room here. And I'm going to say new drum track. I'm going to choose Kabasa, paint in a part. Add a line. Let's go to shaker. And paint in a part. We can easily delete or add notes at any time with the magic drumstick. Let's add another line. Let's say a tambourine. And I'm going to set up an eighth note grid and paint in a tambourine part. Now I'm going to add a line to the top track. Select my channel and paint in a snare drum part.
No, I think a hand clap would be better. No, actually a 909 snare. Yes, that's it. We can solo each track independently. And things get really groovy when you consider that we can play quantize each track to a different value. I'm going to add a little swing to the first track here. And now let's solo the second track, and I'll set my kibasa shaker and tambourine track to a slightly higher swing value. I'll also shift it so it's a little bit laid back in rhythm. Now I'm going to add another line to my top track, set the channel, set it to open hi-hat. You can easily move tracks around. If you select a line, highlighting it, you can change the velocity of all the notes just by clicking and dragging. I can also move notes from one line to another by grabbing them from the bottom of the note. I'm going to make this note an open hi-hat and turn its velocity up a little bit. And a little bit more. Ah, that's better. Let's make this note an open hi-hat too. And now, if we exit the pulse edit window, we can see the two tracks we've created.